why? Drink and roll, right? Yeah, see my wine. I just got it in my book. <coughs> and I eating this swim and dip and noodle. I just I finished noodle already and my wine. So that's good. That's yeah, fine. It's really good wine. I, I got guess, this. I guess book. you're in for a romantic uh, night. Drinking wine, red wine. Mm -hmm. I have tonic water here with Bacardi. This is my wine right here. Oh, Cavit. Cavit. Like oh, red red. It's big is, is that a California wine? Italy. California? No, I said Italy. No, I said, uh, is that wine from California? No, for Italy. See? Ecuador? Italy. Atel Italy. Oh, Italy. Yeah. Oh, Italy. Oh. Oh, you're doing well. You're drinking Italian wine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I was thinking maybe it's a California wine, but oh, Italian wine. Wow. You're so rich. Yeah. You know how much that white caught me? It cost me like maybe eighteen dollar. At least you were here taste some is really good. Yeah, it's too bad you couldn't pour me some of that wine there, that red wine. I know, and honey had some dip swing yeah. with me. I put this at my work. Trip, trip. Uh huh. And a dipper. You work today also? Yep. I, I just got home eating and, and I put some this at my work. And I put some in my wine. Yeah, put yeah. this in my yeah. So you work Friday and Saturday, you off Sunday? No. I off I work today and I off tomorrow. You off New Year. New Year yep. they close, I guess. Everything closed New Year. The, the new uh, supermarket over here by me, Wakeman's, they were closing Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. Here too. Yeah. So I got all this for my work. And today I got it for my work cheap. So I come home, steam it, and eat it. It's me just drink my wine. So you can uh, you can celebrate by yourself with red wine. <laughs> yeah, I always do. I always do red wine. When that bottle gone, I go buy a new one. You said you always do, but you cried to that guy that uh, you'll be alone in Maine and you don't want to be alone, and so you're going to New York, but you still you still up in Maine. You're not in New York. Mm -hmm. I have to work. I would like something New York party. If I got a little bit New Year, like two, two, three days in a row, I'm coming, but why, one day. Why don't, they just, why don't they just give you a regular job instead of using you, you know? They they use you, and then when the, when the year is back to normal, everything is fine, the holidays are over, they're going to they're gonna dump you again, you know, like a man who's using you. See you see that? This is a bite this for swing. Yep. Okay. And I put some that salt, I have it, so I put a little bit and dip it. Today I got some hot sauce. I went down to yeah. uh, Church Avenue in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I got it's some. So good. I took I took some time going on there, bought some uh, fruits and some other stuff, some dates, you know, dates, California dates. Yeah. 
Let it go. So, yeah, I just sitting in here eating a swing and all of them. I got it from my wall and um, I got some uh, ethylene wine to go with that. They say this wine in actually is really popular. Really popular wine for actually people. I weeded it. Spencer in actually, they say. Well, it's really good wine, honestly. Really tasty. I drink like a two cup away there. This is my second one. I so think I still have... got some uh, brandy here from last year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's from California. California brandy. So you work three days in a row, so that's why you didn't come. Otherwise, you'll be, you will, you will be in New York, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? Um, I see these people go out there, you know, to wait for the ball to drop. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, you know, people go there since like 10 in the morning, some I saw for day, like, I don't know, maybe from yesterday. But anyway, many of them go there from like 10 in the morning, you know? I remember when I used to go there, I think I was like still in high school, maybe early days of college, then after that I stopped going. You could, I used to leave like maybe around 10 o'clock at night, take the yeah. train. Go to Times Square. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't like it is now. Now you have all the police and you know, they, they check people, you know, they check with metal detector to see what you bring in. Back then it was different, you know. I leave 10, 10 o'clock, I'm in Times Square. I think like within within half hour or less on the train, I'm in Times Square. I walk yeah. around. Mm -hmm. You had people, but you didn't have the kind of people like you have now. You didn't. You had police, but you didn't have all these police, and you, you sure didn't have all this, uh, you know, checking, um, you know, with metal detector and all this stuff like that. So let me tell you, growing growing up in America, I live in one of the better times, you know, <laughs> that I could say. Now we live in more like in a police state, you know, with a lot of security. A lot of crazy stuff. Um, people who want to set off bombs and all kinds of stuff like that. Back then, you know, I'm sure by then people knew how to make bombs too, but nobody was thinking about making bombs to set bombs off in Times Square. You know. But now I guess that's that's all the thing of. So, you know, like me, I would I would never go back to Times Square. Never. I mean, I would never go to see a ball drop. Yeah, I was there like a few days ago. But uh, like to see a ball drop, no. One experience is good, and I've seen a number of them in, in my past. So that's it for me, you know. I wouldn't go there to see that again. Yeah, to me, you have to be like really young, you know, where you could stand there. One girl, they act well. Uh, how are you going to use the bathroom? And she said, there's a Starbucks there. And also she got diapers. Imagine that. <laughs> yeah. Young girl, she must be like in her early 20s. And she's talking about wearing diapers. Diapers to stand out there in Times Square to see the ball drop. At least the night is not that bad. Some nights it's raining and it's cold and it's freezing. T tonight is not that bad at all. Tonight is like, uh, I think, mid, mid 40 something uh, Fahrenheit. Which it's is not tonight. Bad. It's huh? tonight is the party night, though. Tonight is the party night. It's New Year. 
Yeah, tonight. Everything part, people partying, um, <coughs> drinking is tonight. Tomorrow, everything is closed. Yeah, later on, I'll turn the TV on to look. But, um, you know, those, those days are gone. Yeah. Those days, the days when I used to go there, like, be 10 o'clock. Leave home around 10 o'clock, go to Times Square, get on the train. Like those days, too, had a lot of crime, you know. Those were the days when New York was known for crime and for graffiti. So, yeah. <laughs> in, in a way, um, when you have, like, a lot of crime, less people want to come out at night, at least at those, at those hours, to see a ball drop. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So crime was a disincentive to go out there in Times Square. But I guess I survive all that. Maybe maybe I have a halo over my head <laughs> that protects me from all the stuff that goes on here in New York. All the crime, all the mugging, you know, none of that stuff ever happened to me. You know, I survived all that. I survived the worst days, like in the 1990s, with all the crime spree, the killings and all that stuff. All that stuff I survived. Yeah. None of that ever, ever happened to me. Good job, Wayne. One girl walked walk in uh, some park a few weeks ago in Manhattan. She got killed. Some young thugs tried to uh, uh, rob her or something like that. One of them is like 13 years old. Another one, I think, 14. They took a knife out, stabbed at the death. Imagine that. Was only 18 college students. You know, to I me, that, that is so wrong. You know, what I mean. You know, if you if you if you're 13 years old, what the hell can you really want? You know, at 13 years old, you don't really work unless, like, in the old days. You know, like in the old days, you had a job, but like legally, I think you got to be like 14 or 15 to have a job. So, if you if you're 13 years old, okay, people people shouldn't expect you to be wearing the latest Nike or the latest. Uh, I don't know, Mike, Mike, Joe, Ed Jordans, or what have you. No, because you're only 13 years old, so nobody should laugh at you and say, "Oh, you know, you don't have this, you don't have this," because you don't have a job because you're not old enough. So, why should somebody who's 13 years old go out there trying to rob people to buy stuff? You know, and the parents these days they don't really give a damn. <laughs> you know, back back in the day. If you come home with something in, in my home and uh, they didn't buy or my mother didn't buy, you got to explain where you got it from or you have to take it back. She'll make sure you take it back because it's not yours. Yeah. You know? That's how we were brought up. So what other people have, it wasn't for us to go out there to take from others. So those, those little boys, 13 years old, 14 years old, you know, rubbing. And, and the worst thing, too, is carrying a knife, you know? I never used to carry a knife. Carry a knife for what? You know, what, I know, what do I need a knife for? You know? The only time I carried a knife, one of the jobs I had when I used to work in the sea, seaport, and they gave me a knife because I had to cut things open. That's the only time I used to carry a knife. But that was with the government, you know? And because you needed a knife, you need to cut certain things like uh, some of these boxes, you need to get in there. That's the only time I carried a knife. That's it. Other than that, carrying a knife, walking around with a knife was never my thing, you know? I could, I could protect myself without a knife, but these little punks, 13 years old, 14 years old, walking around with a knife. <laughs> they're sure not trying to protect themselves, but they're trying to hurt people. So that's that's what happened here in New York. 
now kill somebody over over their property. Yeah. So it seems like though we we heading back to those days. Maybe uh maybe maybe if those days come back, Times Square will be empty around um around New Year's Eve. There there may be so much crime then you know people wouldn't go out and then uh yeah, then it'd be easy to go to Times Square. Because people would be scared to go. Like the bomb and bomb in it. Something's gonna bomb into it and then people won't go home after that. And New York City don't make money no more. No. Look at that. Let me go you my you brought that bottle of wine down here to New York with you. Yeah, drink it with you. I can hear that parang music in the in the background there. The man next door is playing parang. <laughs> Too much money, too much food, no good. I hear a lot of wind tonight. I feel like they're swimming. I got big packet for my work. It's only, it's if not then if I don't work there, it cost me a lot of money. But I work there, I get percent off. It cost me maybe ten dollar. Ten dollar for the whole bag. You got your camera all over that apartment. Huh? I guess that's by the dining area. Looking into your living room. I put the heat on. It's nice in here. See, this is actually one. Cubby. Yeah, actually. Select red blend. You only drank a little. This that bottle is nearly full. I only drink two glasses. I don't feel like I don't want to get dry. So I feel like I'm tickling right now. So I guess I guess you be uh you probably be drunk tonight all by yourself if you keep drinking that wine. I'm putting away now. It's good wine, for sure. Yeah, maybe you can save it and bring it down here. Oh, well, when I go down New York, I take some. But that, that bottle has a cork. It's different from the others, you know? Like the others has, um, where you can screw on uh, the top. When you have, when you have a cork, you might as well just keep drinking. <laughs> it's because it's different. Yep. Yeah. 
the ones that uh, the the top where you can just screw the top on you now. That's much. That's much better. The ones with the cork, forget it. Don't you pull that cork out? It's a lot of trouble trying to get that cork back in. All right, time makes me feel like I'm in Spain. And all the Spanish music. I gotta finish my dishes. So. When I was in Barcelona, I met a girl by the name of uh, <laughs> Victoria. Yeah. But this was before before the internet, a long time ago. I still I still got her picture. Let me see here. Victoria. This girl. Can you can you see this girl? Yeah. That yeah, girl. That Spanish girl. Spanish girl. She gave me she gave me um some numbers to get in to get in in touch with her. Yeah. But back in those days, uh it was different. You had to either like call long distance. Yeah. You know, now it's easy to keep in touch with people, you know. Now they got all kinds of means. They got all like messengers, uh they have Facebook. Yeah, we live in in really an interesting time, you know, in the history of civilization. It's it's much easier now, you know. You could travel the world and meet people and you connect with them. But one of the reasons I never I never call her back is because uh I think she was going to um, something that was sold, she told me, at somebody's home. And then she didn't, she didn't really know English. I had to use my Spanish to communicate with her. It was, it was, it was too much of an effort. So I said, you know, what the hell? You know? But she told me, yeah, she gave me a phone number. To call her in Spain. Now with an email, it'd be easy, you know. You know, just call somebody an email. Yeah, this was like 1991, a long time ago. Yeah, 1991. When I met her. It's a long day for me. Good thing, it's a good thing I studied uh, Spanish in high school. I was able to communicate. Great day. You had a great day, Wayne. But you know what? Once you once you go once you go to Asia, like countries like Thailand and so forth, you forget about all those other countries like 
like Spain and so forth, all those girls in Spain. <laughs> you say, wow, you know, it's so different to go to Asia. Yeah. I wish I, I wish when I was younger, like in, in my twenties, I had gone to Asia. Yeah, you know, that would have been something. Instead, I was in I was in Europe. Now, Wayne, move forward now. Can't go back. Um, Europe is uh, a bit expensive, too. Yeah, can't go back like no. Look forward. Like, I'm lucky because. Uh, when I would when I went to the airport, I met a girl from um, from France who lived in, in Paris. So I was able to visit there, stay there, and like travel around, go to different different places. And I didn't have to I didn't have to pay for a hotel. She let me stay in her place. So. That was that was before the days of the internet, you know. Now nowadays in internet in internet lingo they call it like like couch surfing, they say. You know, if you meet somebody on the internet, you stay in their place, you visit, they call it like couch surfing. <laughs> this girl from, from Thailand that I know. She she told me um she went she visited like France, uh I think Austria, different countries, cow surfing. Yeah, that's what she did. People she met from the internet. See, all, all that stuff, all that stuff I did before, before the internet was even, you know, even around. <laughs> you know, so when I hear people talk about the things they do, yeah, you, you meet people when you stay. Yeah, I met people, I stayed in their place, but, you know, but that was pre-internet. There was no like internet, you know, no messenger, no email, none of that stuff. But I did that. Yeah, I stayed. I stayed in that place. And one time, um, I figured, oh, you know, I took her up to um, Amsterdam with me, one one weekend. Yeah, I figured, well, you know what? Since I'm staying in your place, well, I didn't say that to her, but I said to myself, since I'm staying in her place for free, and she she's there in Paris working, and she she didn't go in any place. Let me take her out, and she had never been to Amsterdam. Amsterdam is only a few hours out north from Paris. She never even been there before. <laughs> Imagine that, you know, because people who live, in, I guess, live in Paris. They see like the center of the universe, you know. If you live there, why why go anywhere else? Yeah. So when I was in Spain. I got in a phone board, and I remember I called her and I told her, "Look, I'm in Spain," and I was speaking to her. And she said to me, "You know, why is it you think you you in a hotel? You come and go as you want." She had given me the key. She had given me an extra key to go. She's different from you. See, here was this French girl who met me at the airport and she gave me a key to her apartment and I was able to travel. I stayed in your goddamn place. You didn't even give me a damn key. You know? <laughs> and I know I know you much longer than I knew her. Yeah, I didn't know her that long. And she gave me a key. I was able to travel, go places. 
So I took her off to Amsterdam. And one 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 of the nights, I think it was the last night there, she disappeared. And I didn't know what the hell happened to her. She showed up at the last minute in the morning. She met some French people. And I said, Well, what happened to you? She said, I met some some French people. We were hanging out, we were talking. Yeah. Again. Back then, life was much more complicated because now, with all the means of communication, Facebook, Skype, you know, if you uh, you could easily tell somebody, you know, I'm not I'm not coming in back tonight. I'm, I'm with some people that I met up. But in those days, no, you didn't have that kind of communication. So you have to wonder what happened. Was this person kidnapped? Killed? You, you don't know. Do you have to give a police report? And I just didn't want to go back to, to Paris and not knowing whether she was dead or alive. But she showed up at the last minute. I was so pissed off. Yeah. At least call, at least call the hotel. Because in, in Amsterdam, uh, they speak English a lot, which is good. So you could get around that way, you know. That's one thing about Amsterdam. Unlike in France, if you go to France, you'll have a harder time in France because um, the French don't really care to speak English. Maybe they change now, but, you know, because I guess historically they they and the English always hate each, each other, you know. They and the British, the English, they never liked each other. They spent wars, fighting wars with each other. Here in America, um, the American Revolution, yeah, against the British were fought, was fought with the help of the French. The French were helping uh, the colonial. Fight against the British, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's how much the French and the English hated each other. They didn't like each other. Yeah. And they still don't like each other. But the Dutch are different. You go up you go up to um Holland, you don't have that problem. Yeah, the French people will really speak English too. Do you know that you talk too much? If I know what? You can talk a lot. Yeah? You don't shut up sometimes. You don't let people talk. What do you have to say? All you do is talk, to say, talk. All, you, all you talk about is men. That's it, you know? <laughs> At least I talk about experiences. Things that I experienced, or things that I'm aware of, or so forth, you know. But you, you all, all you talk about is uh, men and what men did to you, or what men eat and what Tinder and all this nonsense, you know. Most, uh, you know, there, there's um, there's a girl. Uh, who subscribed to my uh, my um, YouTube channel? She told me, she said she's on Tinder. And she said most of the men, most of the men uh, who contact her, she said all they want is sex from her. That's what she told me. Yeah. She said that's all, that's all they really want. She said they're not really serious. Like that guy, that guy Kevin that you met. Kevin wasn't serious. He wasn't looking for a relationship. He was just looking for sex. But you, you're too stupid to realize that, you know? You thought he, he was serious. <laughs> he wasn't serious. That's how, um, this girl, um, the Thai girl who used to stay by me, she got lucky. She met a man on Tinder who was really serious. He was really looking, you know, 
for a partner for somebody that he wants to be with. So she got lucky. And then he he been to Thailand too. So that was a positive. Yeah. That was a positive. But um and then she has certain things about her that that makes her an interesting person, you know, you can have a conversation with she travels, she been to she been to a number of countries in Europe, she been to Scandinavia, countries I never been. She been there. She traveled by herself and so forth. So she been she been places. She can have a conversation about different things. So she she was able to she was um she was able to be uh get lucky, I guess, using Tinder. All you seem to be meeting is a bunch of jerks on Tinder. That's what you mean. You mean you be you meet a bunch of horny men on Tinder. That's it. I haven't talked to no one in Tinder. I only go there a lot. And you find that song uh, you by UB Forky, the British group. I say red red wine. I don't know if you ever heard that song before. Red red wine is like uh, a reggae beat, but it's a uh, it's a British group. UB Forty. UB Forty is uh, it's an unemployment form in. Uh, in Britain, <laughs> that people fill out if they're unemployed to get money. Let's see here. You be forty.
On a day tonight. Let's see. My day is all alone when I'm done with my chore, be all set. Mm. I got this sweet potato. It's really good potato. Sweet potato, like that. Really white one. Eat it. I eat two today. Give me allergy. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Look at the comments here. Looks like a lot of Dad's favorite song was Red Red Wine. This this guy Joel Martinez said, I remember my dad telling me. The most girls like red wine. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. This guy probably went out and bought a whole bunch of red wine, huh? Since he, he, his dad told him that most girls like red wine. This guy here says, what's this, LPS Cutie Pie? My mom didn't die or anything, but this is our favorite song. Also, to those who lost a parent and family member, I'm so very sorry. This was from one year ago.
The nice beat makes you forget that the sound is about a man drowning his sorrows. Yeah. That's it. The red the red wine, the guy was trying to forget about some girl, so when he drinks wine, red wine. It helps him cope. It's an hour and seven minutes before the ball drops. Wise men say only fools rush in. I'm down my toe tonight. That's good to get you on toe down. I don't have to worry tomorrow morning. So this guy, Divert Living, this American guy and his Thai girlfriend, they travel around the world. They're now in the Philippines. Hmm. What to expect, Philippines? Shockingly amazing. The Philippines is full of surprises. I ain't gonna go take a quick shower. I'll call you right back, okay? All right. Enjoy yourself in the shower. Yep, I need to because I just got home and I just got done eating and sweep my phone. My hair look nice now. And I'm gonna get myself comfortable. Very good. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, bye.